have Jack this week, so welcome to the Hudson Valley Discat Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this week we're joined by Alex, Corey, and Jamin. Did he just call that the Discat Podcast? <laughs> I mean, yeah. look who's here. Pretty sure. Our guest tonight has been a PDGA member since 1996, which means this is his first season as a PDGA member in which the Detroit Lions won a playoff game. <laughs> he's been a brand ambassador at innova disc since 2019 and if you played a tournament in the disc cap area in the last decade or so there's a good chance that he was either running it or he was an influence on somebody who ever ran it a man of many nicknames captain anheuser cookie monster mr td michigan jeff welcome to the podcast pdga number 11653 jeff wachowski thank you very much hi jeff thanks for coming on hey anytime so i don't like listening to old episodes because it really makes me realize how bad of an editor I was. But when I found out you wanted to come on, I went back and I listened. You were on here in April 2020. That's a long time ago. It's been a while. Mm. But I think that was right around COVID started, man. We were all stuck at home. I learned a few things going back over the old episodes. One, I could have knocked out like five or ten minutes with just some minor editing. It was pretty bad. But <laughs> we didn't really talk a lot of disc golf. We did get into a bit of your disc golf history, which I might add a clip of that here. At age 17, I was still pedaling my way around town and got, hadn't got a car yet. And I was very interested in my 10 speed and distance pedaling, basically distance cycling and drove past a course that I saw people f- throwing Frisbees, not a- at each other. It was a bunch of guys that were throwing Frisbees from one direction to a direction I couldn't see at, the, at that point in time. And when I investigated further, I saw the baskets and asked some questions. And the following week, I was there for doubles. Somebody gave me a beat-up used football-stamped rock that I have to this day, and I've been hooked ever since. Awesome. So how did you get from Michigan to New York? I have 18 years in the automotive design business. And when the auto auto industry went belly up, I was desperate for work and answered a newspaper ad for a design position here at the other General. Spent 18 years working for General Motors, and now I'm 12 years, I believe 12 years into working for General Electric. So did you design anything that we would be familiar with? Yes. Some early to mid-90s Buicks and Oldsmobiles have plenty of door designs to my credit. Nice. As far as door handles, door locks, that kind of interior trim type materials. Do you remember the first PDGA tournament that you played in? Uh, yes. And there should be some people that are a little through New York that uh, played in that same tournament that didn't know me at the time, but know me now. Bobby Jones is one of them. Mm-hmm. Jim Bahomary. It was a Can-Am tournament at Firefighters Park in Troy, Michigan. And it poured rain and I suffered through the first round and no call, no showed the tournament director for the second round. I'm very, <laughs> very embarrassed about that part, but it does show up in my PDGA standings as a DNF. Hmm. I had won the Kisco Ice Bowl. I got vertigo and was getting sick and I couldn't finish. I was leading, too. I was ill-prepared for a deluge that it was, but that was my home course. I played doubles there. I played a league there. I have the trophy for the season novice division champion for the Motor City Chain Gang. I believe it was 1989, two years after I started playing. It says you have 20 career wins, correct? Yes. Most of them are solo wins because thanks to NIFA, which allowed me to play solo in my own division. Oh, okay. Well, do you remember <laughs> the first one? The first one I won with other people involved was, I can't believe it was Borderland, but I it might have been Central Park. I know I've got three Central Park wins, either Am Masters or Pro Masters. But yeah, my first win, I believe, was in somewhere in New England, but I don't know off the top of my head. It caught me off guard. I have for solo, would it be April Showers? Yeah, that'd probably be my first win, but I, I probably was also running the event and I ran that solo. But I'm, the first division win where the, I played against somebody, I think it was Central Park, and I think it might have been actually against Josh Weinstock, if I'm not be sure. All right. Well, I'm showing your most recent one was uh, in 2018 at the Play It Again Open. Does that sound right? Yes, that's right. And that might have been the one where I shot a thousand reader round. And oh. <laughs> after the, after it went official, it was like 998. So it kind of upset me for that. <laughs> I would be too. You got 370 bucks. How'd you spend that? I think I took the wife out to dinner. Maybe my nephew that caddied for Mark Stryker or something along that line. All right. And it looks like you've only played four events since. What's the reasoning for that? Uh, Various reasons. Some of the times I dropped out because I wanted to run a better tournament as a tournament director. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
I've had. I'm definitely in a slump. I would call it that. I'm not ashamed to admit that the past year and a half I've been in a quite the slump. If you look at my ratings history, it has dropped drastically in the past year and a half, two years. Well, finally, I've seen you post about it, but what exactly is an Innova Ambassador? Pretty much along the same lines that I've been doing for the past ten years as a tournament director and promoter of the sport slash the brand of Innova, but more focused towards them. I've grown to appreciate their ability to put out a really good stamp on a disc that I give them on last minutes on on small notice. But plenty of years past, they give me a great selection to create great tournament discs for all the players that get to play my events. And after that, they just asked me to be a sponsored member. Nice. And I've been hooked ever since. What year was that about? 1985. Mm. Like that one song? 1985. <laughs> yep. With Springsteen, Madonna, way yeah. before Nirvana. Yeah. The music still on MTV? <laughs> Man, those must yes, be yes. This is before the internet, even. It might have been before Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned a disc when I was listening. You said you had a, uh, a football-stamped rock. Yes, yeah, a football-stamped rock was my first disc, and I still have it to this day. Okay, you do. Well... Yes. When you say a football stamp rock, does it have a picture of a football on it? Is it a, like a, a stamp that looks like pigskin or is it just like a lion's logo? Instead of the, <laughs> none of the above, <laughs> the end of a logo is in the middle of it with choice of champions and that such. The text is in the middle. Instead of a ring around the stamp, basically, it's an oval shaped thing. It looks more like a football sh- shape. Okay. Does it have laces? Actually, no, it does not. Actually, it looks closer to probably a rugby ball than a football. Uh, it's a little more rounded on the ends. It's not quite as pointy as a football. You said you still have it. Do you still use it? No. It would be beat. Beyond all belief, it would be beat. But it imagine the hands that you could throw with it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that that thing. It's basically at this point, it's it's tore down to the point where it's basically probably flies like a really beat-in DXXD, which is a understable putter, which is currently still in my bag. That's one of the two discs that are still in my bag that I still throw as rocks and XDs for early discs. My first brand new disc was a DX Cobra. Actually, that was back when there was only one plastic. <laughs> that's all you got. And that's also where I got my first ace was at that Cobra. At that first course, Rain Tree Park in Troy, Michigan. When's the last time you played it? That course? Yep. Two years ago, I want to say. It's my buddy Howie G. Do you think you're better now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Of course, it's like a kitty course. It was like one of the original head head header courses. So if anybody's ever played the original Kisco course way back with the old baskets, it was kind of like that, but on flat ground. You know, power fours that were, I don't know, 350, 400 feet kind of thing. Funny stuff where, you know, the rolls were 197, 200 feet kind of thing. So the Lions had a playoff game this past week, and we'll get to that. But before we get to the playoffs, what are your thoughts on their season as a whole? They made great strides compared to the last couple of seasons, and per what the coach said three years ago, I think they've progressed quite well. I was heartbroken that they lost yesterday, and I also think that, just like the coach said in the, in the post game, it's going to be twice as hard to do it again, primarily because of the fact that you never know if, if uh, injury is going to happen, and the fact that our schedule is much, much harder for next year. They do that, right? The better you do, the, the tougher your schedule the next season? Yeah, they release the schedule of who we're playing, not just not the dates in which we're playing. Yeah. Plus, you throw in the fact that they're not going to sneak up on anybody anymore. Not that they really did. Not after five or six games, especially after the season before. We showed everybody before this season that we were forced to be reckoned with. But do you think it's a, a team that, that's built to last? Uh, it's a young team. I can't see that they're going to fall on their face and miss the playoffs next year. I got a feeling they'll make the playoffs next year. I don't know where they're going to end up kind of thing. But it's all just a matter of yeah, how it all shakes out. You got to play the games to know for sure. So how do you feel that they did in the playoffs? Snuck by in the first couple games. Nice to see Jared Goff exercise the demon of Matt Stafford in the LA Rams first round. And then we squeaked by barely beating the Buccaneers. And then we played half a game yesterday. Mm. Had some really, really fluky breaks. You know, just I keep looking back at some, some of the, the drop passes were, the, were items that just kind of stands out to me. Missed tackles were a huge thing that stood out to me. That fluky interception, it bounced off that guy's helmet. And the guy yeah. caught. That was, I mean, just, Crazy stuff like that happened, and it was right in a row kind of thing. One, two, three little things right in a row. We went from 17-point lead to tied up a matter of six minutes, I think, or seven minutes it was. Do you second-guess the coaching decisions on a couple of the fourth downs or no? Yes, I screamed at the TV plenty of times. <laughs> Kick the damn – that should be the name of this podcast. Kick the damn field goal. <laughs> it's two damn field goals. We probably would have missed one of them. You know? mm. Last drive could have been for the win it is what it is. But fluky stuff's going to happen in sports. There's any number of examples, but at least it wasn't the refs. 
Yes. <laughs> yes, it was not the refs. This time it was not the refs, even though some, there was a news story about refs of choice that we were being given for the game because we knew about that like a week in advance and Monday or Tuesday, what uh, group of refs we were supposed to have. And the lead ref and the Lions have had a past, but not to the extent of the Dallas game, which is a game we won, by the way. <laughs> Since we're talking football, I've been holding off on this. We haven't had much time for it, but Corey... Hmm. Can I get a fantasy football, your season in review kind of? Season in review, put it this way. I think I uninstalled both apps before the fantasy playoffs were even done. (laughs) 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 I didn't make the actual playoffs in either league. I didn't come dead last in either league. I've avoided the deep disc, Brian Pickersmith, fantasy football league. I've avoided the ice bath. We know who is taking the ice bath, and we're thinking about making some changes to how we do it for next year. But uh, at the very least, they had to go for at least how long I went. That's got to be a line drawn in the sand. I should have went longer. Really screw the next guy over. But Can we say who this was? Uh, I don't think it's a disc golfer. I think it's one of the other guys in our, in our group. Okay. No, believe me. If I, if I thought that anyone that heard this would know the guy, I would name drop. <laughs> For fun, we can call him like I don't know Kyle Hirsch or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Kyle Hirsch <laughs> came dead last. Then we'll have to definitely get that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think in one league, I I won like the toilet bowl league, or at least went to the finals in that one. But that's that's almost kind of embarrassing to even mention. You talking about like the. The, like the consolation bracket. That's okay. Overall the season, though, I think I did better than I had planned, especially if you go by Yahoo or post-draft analysis. I think they were both saying that I was probably going to come in dead last and maybe get a win. But they're both keeper leagues. I don't know if anyone on my team that's going to actually be kept. And I look forward to hopefully avoiding that fucking last in the both leagues next year. <laughs> and hopefully the Jets will do something. Does the consolation bracket count towards who comes in last overall or is it just at the end of the season who's in last at least in one league and i'm brian's gonna correct me on this on friday when i talk to him and after he listens to (laughs) it but i'm gonna guess that so like the the draft order is kind of set as far as teams that do well versus teams that don't teams that finish in the top half or top four i think their draft position is already marked and then everybody else like draws randomly so I, i i think for the people that didn't make playoffs their season is obviously only the regular season, but I think the people that make playoffs, it actually matters what position they come in. Okay. So I'm sure I got that totally wrong in one way or another. But Does that league even have a consolation bracket or no? I think it's just for fun. It's just, you know, it's like a Yahoo standard, you know, setup. But I wasn't sure if it was Yahoo or not. That's why I was checking because I know Yahoo, it's basically, it's there. You just do it. Yeah. Or you don't and you just, you know, like I said, uninstall the app and <laughs> wait for next year. <laughs> Yeah. Put it on mute so the group chat doesn't blow up your phone. Yeah, although maybe I would do better in fantasy if I kept the apps installed and, and looked at all the push notifications that spans me with as far as people's <laughs> off-seasons and whatnot. Yeah, well, that's the good thing. You can be involved as much or as little as you want. Yep. Jamin, what about a recap of the Steelers season? They made it to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I think there's only like two different types of Steelers seasons that have happened in the past six years, and those are ones where they have a winning record and don't make it to the playoffs or have a winning record and lose in the first round of the playoffs. You know, I'm always happy that they're winning, but I really think that Mike Tomlin's winning season record is getting in the way of them being an excellent team again. I think it keeps them being a barely winning team, (laughs) but they haven't had any good draft picks in a long time. So if they're going to get a good quarterback at any point, they're going to have to blow up their cap or... I don't know, mortgage their future in draft picks or just have a losing season at some point. But between Ben Roethlisberger retiring a couple of years too late and pushing them out of that good quarterback draft era and them like always drafting in the middle or end of the first round, they're not hitting on any of those Tom Brady quarterbacks that were drafted super late and they were able to develop. You know, they tried that with Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett now, and both of them have turned out to be mediocre. Mm. All right, well, what's your Super Bowl prediction, Jamin? Who's going to win? <laughs> uh, I kind of want San Francisco to win. It's, uh, yeah, I, as long as Baltimore got kicked out, I was fine with it because <laughs> they're in the same division yeah. as the Steelers, but that's about it. I hope that there's a good game. I was super happy that there was another good game between the Bills and the Chiefs. You know, that's something that is just going to, I feel like we've got three or four more years of that game playing out. Mm. It's like Brady and uh, Peyton Manning, where Peyton just couldn't get past Brady, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. It's like Brady and every other quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I think San Francisco is going to take it, but I mean, it's so hard to bet against a team like the Chiefs that have so at this point so much experience in that game. That's got to be worth a lot. All right, Corey, who you got? Who do I got for what? For Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, I don't like either team winning it, to be honest, but I, I think See? I dislike the Niners less at <laughs> okay. winning it. So, yeah. I'll go right along with what Corey says. Yeah. <laughs> I would have much rather had Ravens, Lions, or, uh, yeah, anything else than what we got. That's three Niners. Alex, what do you got? I just hope both teams have fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have zero investment in this Super Bowl, so. No plans to watch it? I'll, I'll probably watch it. I just don't particularly care who wins. <laughs> I'll go uh, with the Chiefs just to uh, be contrary. There you go. All right. Is Gronk going to make the field goal this year? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> where does he do it from extra point i don't know exactly i don't have the context for this what, what is happening with Gronk? he did a commercial goal? last year for somebody where he was going to kick a field goal and, and win somebody a bunch of money and he did not and so this <laughs> year they've been doing commercials and he's like but i catch the ball i don't kick it <laughs> i guess they're doing it again they're bringing it back and he's training with uh apollo creed and so we'll see a bunch of bad time. football kickers yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to get like Adam Venetari or somebody out there, but no, they got uh, Apollo Creed. That's going to help. So, Jeff, you went to the Northeast Disc Golf Expo or the NEDGE. What is that? NEDGE. And where, where was it? It was in Boxborough, Massachusetts at the Convention Center Hotel. Very nice place. Huge parking lot because it was needed because there was lots of people that showed up. And there was a line around the entire parking lot. <laughs> The morning of, of which I was about eh, 75 to 100 people deep or in the line. And I posted a picture up of myself out there freezing my ass off. And 10 minutes later, a representative from Minima showed up and handed me a vendor pass. And I cut into the front of the line and got there early. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and the first person sitting in the line pulled my shirt as I walked by him and said, hey. So I turned around and it's none other than Pete Fitzgerald from Central Park. Nice. Oh, okay. He was there at 6.30. The place opened up at 10. He was there at 6.30. He was first in the line. Oof, that sounds cold. It was pretty obvious. He was bundled up really good, really well for it. Is this like a new thing or has it been going on for a while? So the second year it happened. Last year, I think he had 25 vendors, 50 booths. So he had some other, I think there were a lot of double booths and that kind of thing. But he had like, yeah, he had one room barely full because of the fact that nobody knew him from anybody. I think Ben Kenny is the guy that spearheaded this. And he was able to rope in 25 vendors. Last year, this year, I believe he was over 100 vendors this year. Mm. He expanded into two other rooms. He had a mini 18 hall, of course, in the front garden area that had this indoor garden area. It's similar to what Desmond looked That also had food and drinks in there. And somebody else pulled in nine baskets and cut some trees here and there in the woods around the parking lot. And there was actually a nine hole pop up course that actually was lit up for glow on Saturday night, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, they had uh, five or six different seminars. Brian Earhart was there. Steve Dodge was there, obviously. Marshall Street was there, including Jason Southwick. That was the only guy I didn't get to talk to. I saw him walking out as I was walking out. The Nick and Matt Show was there, which is now called Stagger Stance. That's your favorite, isn't it? The Nick and Matt Show? <laughs> I, I moderate on it because, you know. Oh, nice. I had nothing better to do on a Monday night. Because <laughs> you probably didn't invite me on here. No. Oh. <laughs> only joking. I'm only joking. I know, I know. I don't know why I got it. I was, I was probably no, on it because somebody asked me to be on the show. <laughs> That's cool. And if I had uh, Jeremy Coling along with a contingency of representatives from the East Coast store. MVP had, of course, Simon Lazat. Will Schustrick was there from Prodigy. Paul Macbeth showed up and released his new disc. Signed mm-hmm. autographs for hours over there. He was there from 10 to 2. When I left at 2.30, he was still there. Signing autographs. Oh, so he might have What's his there. new disc? It's the Kratos or something? Kratos. The Kratos, yes. Basically a Luna with a bead. <laughs> yeah, I got a disc or no disc on that. <laughs> I've, been, I've been sitting on that one. Because I got to have a video game disc or no disc. I am ready for Finally. <laughs> Simon released a new Pixel. There's a yeah, new disc for MVP called the Pixel. Uh, Prodigy released all of their NHL branded discs. All in black, DX plastic kind of thing. All the stamps look like hockey pucks, basically, but with mm. the center, it's got it's got a team logo on it. We're like uh, 30 seconds from uh, FDR. Uh, oh, my God. Thank you. I was watching it, and I got and I looked away <laughs> for a few minutes. And Thank you, Alex, and make sure that we know that. Are we going to pause for that? <laughs> uh, you don't have to pause, but no. my eyes will be dancing around. Are you signing up, Jeff? No, I'm not signing up. I'm running, oh, a, I'm running a tournament that day. Oh, you could do the M side. Running the Black <laughs> Breeze. Yes, I could do the M side, but then I would also miss out on New York Team Challenge Final. Yeah, yeah, you're probably making it to finals. <laughs> uh, I think I'm pretty sure Mind Kill's going to make it. 
<laughs> yeah, I would hope. I don't know. A lot of season left. That's why you play the games. <laughs> Got to play that Wilcock neutral bash in the fucking mud pie again. So was this your first time going to the expo? Yes, this is my first time. I couldn't make it last time. I don't know what came up. I noticed in my Facebook memories thing for yesterday, the day before it showed up in there, and I had a reason. I just can't remember exactly what it was, but yes, this is my first time going there. I spent a good portion of the day there. I said, when I had 30, I got into the building and for till about uh, 2.30. I finally pried myself away from there. I had to say goodbyes and stuff because I wanted to leave. Actually, part of my getting that uh, vendor pass was uh, they put me to work. <laughs> I was at the end of a booth most of the day, which wasn't a bad thing, kind of thing, because hanging out with Big Jerm all day was a total hoot. And they also released the new uh, glow plastic for their XD, Champion XD anniversary edition of it, and the new Aviar, the X glow plastic. And the glow is very, very bright. They've improved their glow plastic immensely. And those flew off the shelves pretty fast. We restocked those bins several times in the course of Saturday. Sunday was a lot lighter day from what I've been told. When does the season start for those guys like Jeremy and all them? A couple of weeks. An all-star thingy is going on in a couple of weeks now. Does he still play or does he just commentate now? No, he still he's, he plays from time to time. I don't know if he's touring all the, all the time, but yeah, he still he still mixes the both of them because the commentary he does is uh, post produced. So in fact, he can uh-huh. do that after a round kind of thing if you'd like. Aside from other, other stuff, yeah, he doesn't do any live. I spent most of the day at the end of a booth. I bumped out a few times to walk around. So I but I had to see it. I got all the good autographs too. Mm. One disc. I mean, Paul McBeth sign him in of a disc, <laughs> <laughs> and he admitted in front of his discraft family that he's a Lions fan because he has to be because this craft is in, in <laughs> yeah, Michigan. Yeah, in Michigan. Mm. I came right out and asked him, I said, you're probably the only guy in this entire building that's rooting for the 49ers tomorrow. He said, because you're from California. He says, no, 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 no. He says, the Lions are in these guys' backyard. He says, I'm a Lions fan. I was like, that is so cool. I wish I would have got that on, on tape. But I don't know if he was sincere about it because that's probably why they lost. <laughs> kidding <laughs> he's very nice everybody was you know shoestrick was super nice i mentioned who i was with this cap in the whole albany area and uh yeah he was still a big smile on his face helped me out whenever he could sign my disc once i once i found it because schwartz got it for me and i couldn't find him he was busy all day too taking care of some of the seminars and stuff and some of the electronics and digital stuff marketing stuff yeah. he was part of i think he was behind the disc off pro tour booth for a little while i think the word is out now i think that the, the number of big companies that were there gateway and clash was there and I think the word will get out. I think it'll get even bigger next year. I think he's going to have to turn people away, take up more space somewhere else. He's going to have to put booths in where, they, where we had the mini course because that's a big open space. Could have been used for booths, but it wasn't because we really didn't need it. Jamie, you go to this or hear about this? Yeah, I made it out. Any particular reason? What was the thought process? I, I wanted to kind of check out some of the new drops. The disc that Clash dropped is a disc that I've been throwing a lot lately, the Salt, and they dropped it in a new plastic, which is very new idea in disc golf as far as i can tell it's the first kind of thing i've ever seen of this it's a dual plastic blend and the rim of the disc is much stiffer and not particularly grippy plastic it's not not grippy it's just that's not what it's made for and then the top is made to be grippy and is a little gummier so if you're comparing it to innova plastic the rim of the disc is star and the top is like a gummy champ plastic Hmm. Um, they call it tone, and it, it's super interesting. Halo tones? Did they did they did they mention that? <laughs> Halo tones? No. <laughs> is it molded all at once, or is it molded separately, like MVP? I am assuming it was not molded all at once. That sounds like a very difficult thing to do, but I also have no reason to actually think that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just seems really difficult from my very limited slash non-existent knowledge of plastic. I did not get by there. Actually, I walked by there. Saw it, yeah. buddy, but I did not stop in to see that. I, didn't, I was unaware of that. Yeah, it was cool. The week prior, I was telling a bunch of people I was heading out to the expo, and I had a few people ask me to grab them different things. And I was lucky enough to be able to get all of the stuff that people asked me to get. But the tone disc, that's um, as I was driving out, Dave Martin sent me a message and said, so they're selling five of the tone discs every hour. I was like, oh, well, never mind. Forget that. <laughs> but Taylor and I ended up kind of sticking around. We walked around a whole bunch, played the mini course, and then played the nine hole course, which ended up being mob golf. It was me, Taylor, and Dave were in line. And then Kenji, Brandon, and Gene showed up. And then by the end of the round, we had Mark Bryan and I believe his brother. I didn't catch his name. So it took us a while to get through those nine holes. And then we kind of got off the course at the right time. And I went over to the Clash booth, and Taylor and I were both able to get one. So nice. Yeah, that was very cool. I, I picked up a couple pixels. Oh, yeah? 
Yeah, I'm excited to give those a try. They feel really nice. I got the medium. Uh, how do the new plastics feel? Great. They're doing the new electron blend. Yeah, they had soft and medium. I didn't feel the soft, but the medium are almost too soft for me anyways. So I grabbed a couple of those. It'll be really interesting to see what the firm is like. Yeah. So I, I grabbed two of the mediums to try them out. I also asked, Donnie was there, Alex. That's one of the reasons I wanted to stop in and say hi and put a face to a name. Mm -hmm. Donnie Clemmers, the guy with MVP who's been super helpful with everything I've done in the past year. But I asked him, you know, is is the proxy going to come out in this plastic? And he was not sure. So (laughs) it (laughs) sounds like right now they're really focused on getting this initial wave of pixels out, kind of fill in the blanks later. Yeah, I kind of assume they're looking to get feedback on this plastic before, you know, going all in on it. They definitely were hyping up the new blend as something that people have either been asking for or will be enjoying now that it's out there. Yeah, it does feel super, super nice. It's got a very similar theme to like a P2. I don't Mm -hmm. think it's like a copy of a P2 or anything, but it's definitely it's a lot deeper than a proxy. Similar rim to the proxy, it just feels like it's a bigger version of it. I had heard comparisons to the P1X, if I remember correctly. Okay. I don't know about Discmania enough to really put a good comparison there. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I, I'm not sure about that one. Somebody told me the other day that a P1X is the same thing as a zero by Innova, X-E-R-O. And if that's the case, I don't think it feels anything like it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. But no, the expo itself was really fun. When I got there, it was a little overwhelming. Just figuring out where to go. You walked into this one room that was like packed to the gills with people. I got there, at, I want to say between 12.30 and 1 o'clock. So it had already been open for two and a half hours. And the parking lot was full. People were parking on the road (laughs) out of the place. And it was absolutely packed. It was was really a cool thing to see in the sport just in general. This is something that not a handful of years ago would not have happened. Mm. There was hundreds, probably thousands of people there just when I was there. And it was it was cool. People from all walks of life. My mom and my sister went on Sunday and checked out a, a bunch of different things. The thing that they were really looking forward to was apparently there was somebody with like an AI system or like, like some algorithm where you could, you know, take a couple of throws and analyze your form and uh, give you some tips there. There was a good line for that. I remember seeing that. They said they waited a long time, but uh, they got some good things out of it. So I'm sure they're looking forward to testing it out as soon as, you know, the snow goes away. That's really cool. I didn't know that. There was so much stuff you couldn't get to everything. Yeah. Yeah. It was abysmal putting at the Innova booth. Oh, my God. Speaking of the Innova booth, we had this custom wrapped Disc Catcher Pro for uh, a giveaway. Oh, did uh, did Greg Hill post a picture of that? Yes. That looked cool. Tie-dye picture one, which got Coling signed it before the guy took it. And when I left at 2 o'clock, the area I left that I left the booth at two o'clock. I didn't leave the building until two thirty. The record was thirty eight. It was thirty one for the kids. The kids were closer. The kids were another five feet, four or five feet closer kind of thing. They had a sport that they were giving away for the kids. Thirty one ended up winning it. Thirty eight was the record for the guys when I left. And somebody from I think it was from Maine put down one hundred ninety eight in a Holy row. Holy crap! Took it home. I guess a crowd showed up and left twice, basically, while two, three times while he was while they were counting because they got over a certain number. See, here's here's my thought is somebody that good at putting doesn't need another practice basket. <laughs> Not really a practice basket. That's a pro. That's a pro 28 just on a stand. Oh, okay. Still. <laughs> I have the same one in my basement, but, but yeah, it's, it's actually quieter. It's quieter than a sport in my basement. That's mm-hmm. for sure. 198. And we only had like, I don't I want to say we only had 18, 20 putters. And they were like zeros, ABRs. And fireflies or something? Yes, fireflies, yes. There was actually a really nice marble firefly that Big Germ took. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whose putters they were, but they were used. There were no names on them. But they were chewed up, especially once after the at the end of the day. But yeah, we only had like eighteen of them, kind of thing. So he had to reload. Even the guy that had thirty eight, the record, you had to reload two, three times for him before he missed, kind of thing. So there was a pause. It wasn't like you got in a rhythm and you kept going. Your rhythm, as soon as you got in rhythm, you were on a disc and you had to start over. You know, we had to go fish them out of the basket and hand them back to him. So there were like breaks between that kind of thing. Then there's people walking around. They're putting between an aisleway and the table that were selling discs kind of too. So there's people and there's people trying to cut through between <laughs> between our booth and the net kind of thing because there was another aisleway there. We were on a corner. <laughs> so, yeah, there were plenty of distractions. I don't know if it, there were less once he was doing it. 
But during the course of the day, there was plenty of distractions of people just walking out in the middle of it. I did it myself a few times, walk out in the middle of somebody putting. But yeah, I was amazed that somebody went that far with it. You know, Sounds like Sunday was a lot less crowded. Just talking to Kevin Cranky. <laughs> And he said, you get in and out pretty quick. Yeah, I think they said they saw a couple of, you know, locals, you know, as they were going around. Oh, yeah. I ran into the tunnel locals. I saw Ryan Travis, Mike Zancelli, Jeff, Mike oh, Wait, who did you see before Mike Zancelli who? I don't know his number. Don't say. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't talk about it, but when we played that against CPS at Jay Park, it was me, Harry, Kyle, and Dave Hudson. Dave Hudson told the story about how... <laughs> he got all freaked out that everyone knew that Ryan Travis's PGA number one four eight three four three. Was it you telling the story, Alex? Yeah, yeah, at the monthly at yes. first tracks. <laughs> he started talking, and I think we were on hole twenty four, the Bell Hole or Tree Love, and I walked away to see if there's still people down there because the Bell's being refurbished. And as I was turning around, I started hearing Dave tell the story, and it was literally <laughs> verbatim, word for word, what you said. <laughs> like ah, I've heard this before. <laughs> Wow, that's great. The most important people that I ran into were the McDonald's. Mm, second place Zach from last week. <laughs> <laughs> he was second place in like three things. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, was, I was able to get a hold of him and be like, hey, I have one of your discs, I think. And yeah, <laughs> I have a disc that just says Zach, maybe Z McDonald. And I wasn't 100% sure it was his, but it's been like kicking around in my trunk. So if nothing else good happens on the Wilcox match, I'll at least get him his disc back. <laughs> And it's going to be at what? SPW? Yeah. I'm happy about that. <laughs> How far is that for you? Like an hour 10. But that's still like half of everywhere else, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's half an hour closer than the home matches. Yeah. But that's crazy. One thing I was kind of laughing at with that whole debate was going is that like everybody's like, oh, let's go to FDR and like Wilcox. And I was like, guys, if we have to drive through the other team's area, maybe this isn't the best neutral match. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let's do it at Warwick. Mm. <laughs> that's where we were fighting to uh to get ours going with j park for our neutral but um we officially locked in prospect for ours nice where's that like city wise troy prospect is troy oh, okay yeah. jeff is this your first year playing new york team challenge yes it is i was asked last year in the middle of a snowstorm weekend basically to play a home match at mind kill and i was said <laughs> over my dead body <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> Later in the season, him and Jess jumped on the disc captains for New England team challenge. So I felt kind of obligated to uh, reciprocate. Yes. He asked me again this year. I decided to. Plus the fact that October, November, and December were beautiful months to go play. Even though we were at home in my, in my kill, which is not very old man knee friendly. That's for sure. <laughs> Resolution Hill. <laughs> yes. Yes. I made it work and I contributed somewhat. I contributed more on the home matches than I did at all in the Steam P. Wallace away match, but we'll let you let that one go too because that was a total embarrassment to myself. We had a shot. We just, you know, neither of us had any great shots. That was the only thing. I was still stewing over the freaking singles loss. So <laughs> if I apologized profusely, then I, you know, it was just my head wasn't in it. That's all good. So let me get a little history on your team challenge. When did you first start playing and for who? I guess I assume that's New England Team Challenge you played for, right? Yes, New England Team Challenge. I believe this is our 10th season with Disc Captains. And I played two years prior to that one year for the DAM team, which was the second Tully Flat Rock team, basically. Where's that out of? Massachusetts. Basically, I had nearly a two-hour drive to my home matches. So I was like an early version of Marcia, where she drives three hours <laughs> to our home matches. Because I couldn't get enough people here to create our own team at the time. And after that season, I'd wrangled Kenji into the mix, and that team folded. We ended up playing on Crane Hill 2 the following year. And where's that out of? Other side of Springfield. And also Massachusetts. And uh, me and Kenji's enthusiasm towards playing Team Challenge brought enough names and faces into the fold to actually field a team the first that first year or the next following season for the disc captains. We've been going ever since. Me and Kenji were the captains for several years. How many pools were there? Ooh. We started in Seapool, and that was a lot. That was a bounce pool. pool. Yes. Nice. So you predate the playing pool. Yeah. Oh, yes. So <laughs> did so the Stony Kills, I think. I think they started in D, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. I think their first year was the first year of the playing pool. I know was that it? they were there for a while. Yeah. They've never been relegated. They moved up to D, and that's it. Uh, we moved up not this past year, but the year before from E pool. And I don't think we've been relegated, but I haven't been with a team as long. So I don't know. So what year would that be that you guys started this captain? 2013. Okay. And you and Kenji ran it until when? Jamie, when did you get on? Five years ago? Six years? Uh, when did I start playing? Okay. So yeah, you were, you were on the team for a year, maybe two. 
before you became the captain. Oh, yeah. I don't know how many years I was on the team before I was a captain. Maybe three. Yeah, at least three. I became a captain in 2019. 20 was my first season because it ended in COVID. Mm -hmm. Really great at timing. (laughs) (laughs) We had no idea that hurting cats could be so tough. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, God. So were you still on the team at this point? Jeff, when you stepped down as captain, or did you stop playing? I was always a co-captain. Me and Kenji kind of shared duties to some extent, all the way up until game day kind of thing. And once Jamin showed up, he seemed to have his head wrapped around it more so than I. So I take care of the food and attendance. And it seems like him and Dave Koch seem to be the masterminds behind matchups. You're still playing? I'm still playing, but I'm, my captaining duties are more co-captaining. I'm on the organizational end of it. He's on the strategy matchups kind of thing. Well, I'm pretty sure he gets his charts from Alex, his color coded charts. <laughs> I had to guess, but <laughs> I wish Alex gave me some help. <laughs> <laughs> no, I use pretty much the exact same chart that I saw Kenji use. I just made it on Microsoft Word. There are some other captains who frequent the podcast who are much more technologically savvy than I. <laughs> Who, who, who are those captains? <laughs> All of the other ones, probably. <laughs> I don't know anything about uh, Jack's technique. Between Alex and Jason, they've got these Excel spreadsheet down to a science, the point where Yeah, for sure. Almost AI matchups. Yeah, I stole the idea off Jason in the first place. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what Jack's uh, spreadsheets look like, but I, I do know the last time that we played him, I had to tell him who was on his roster. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> so Jeff, what do you think of New York Team Challenge? There's so many people that don't want to travel four hours to go play around an hour and a half stood for that, and it makes total sense. It's, it's it's also getting a lot more people, and it's getting a lot of girls. That will only help the New England Team Challenge in my eyes. At some point in time, there's going to be a certain amount of people that are going to want to spread their wings a little more, that have the chance and time to do so. It's, it's it's a huge commitment to go off to Maine or off to New Hampshire or somewhere where it's three and a half four hour drive, and it's like there's no way I'm doing that. I set my distance at about two hours now. Anything over two hours, and I'm getting a room. I'm there Friday, and I'm staying on Sunday. There's no way I'm driving back two, three hours. You just ain't got that fire, and you know more, Jeff. Not for driving after <laughs> seven miles of walking. Repeat, man. There's energy levels kind of taper off, especially after one or two double IPAs. <laughs> Thanks, fucking Kevin Crokey, bringing Fidens in force. That was the highlight of their of their food spread. What's that beer? Mm. Beer. It's a hell of a food spread. Did not live up to expectations. Like I kind of expected it to be something that blew away what we were doing with Mind Kill and the disc captains. And it wasn't. It was good. There was enough of it. And you mind killers sure do love your spread. <laughs> Most of those players are New England team challenge and they know that they know what it takes, you know, and they know that a great spread goes a long way. Well, that's what I was going to say. That's it's. I think it's important to think that the Mind Kill Team Challenge team has probably 40 years of Team Challenge experience in the spread game on their team. Yep. And Tower of Power has three months now. I don't know what the Disc Captain spread looked like their first two home matches, but I bet it didn't look like Tower of Powers. Nope. 18 people on the team. You should have uh, 12 crockpots. I want to just throw that out there. That wasn't a number. But they brought double that and brewskis for you? They brought good beers. He brought a good selection of good beers. But he also had. <laughs> and they had breakfast. They had breakfast, which is something that I think that teams should start announcing. Kind of, it's like I hate to have somebody have a good breakfast like that and then not eat it. When we went to New Hampshire, you know, New Hampshire one, yeah, those breakfast sandwiches are the bomb. And it was like I already ate. You know? Well, yeah, because Tower Power's got a Stewart's like five minutes away, which is ideal for a course. I thought you were going to say ideal for a quarry. <laughs> well, and for a quarry. But what I mean is, if you're almost there and you're like, oh, there's a Stewart's, let me grab something real quick. And then you get there and you find out they got pancakes and sausage, then you're like, whoa, you know, what's going on here? So, Jeff, how many teams do you think, right now they're at eight, right? Yes. Do you think that's the perfect number or do you think it should expand? I think the first thing they should do is maybe expand team size. Are we at the same size as uh, New England Team Challenge yet? For minimums, yes. For minimums, yes, we are. But maximums? Yeah, for New England, it's 16 and two minimum. For New York, it's 15 and three. So 18 total either way. But that's also the maximum for New York. And I don't think New England has a maximum. It's like 25 or something like that. No, we do. I think it's 22. Yeah, I think it's 22 and two or 20 something. Maximum is 22 and three. 22 and three. three. Yes. So, I mean, there's a little wiggle room there to pull in new players without actually having new teams. But there is also that chance that, you know, know, if you go any bigger, you're going to have to, I think you're going to have to either expand it 
into September, run until May or something like that, you're going to have to start running into tournament season more so than you already do. Or you split it into different pools and stuff. Or you go separate pools and then that's a way bigger fish to fry there. But you could probably maybe not add as many as a full team, but you could add a good number if you just increase the cap is what you're saying and then grow from there. Yeah, I think you might start having a couple of issues. I'm thinking of Saratoga because they only have the nine holes, you know, different tee pads, but only nine holes. I don't even understand why that's a team. I mean, I understand why it's a team, but I don't understand why they use that course. Is there another course that could be used? Not really. You know, Heiser yeah. Creek. It'd be cool if Heiser Creek had a team. That would be the bomb. You guys should do finals there. <laughs> For real. Well, then you have parking problems with trying to get. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 14 worth of people there. Jamin, why didn't we push for that to the neutral site for Wilcox? Make them drive two hours. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're practical. I'm sure Jason didn't push for it because he's practical. <laughs> Fucking practical Jason. <laughs> yeah. Always yeah. thinking through situations and coming up with solutions. Yep. Engineering man. I'm there too. Jeff just dropped a little tidbit about how he's a fellow engineer. And I was just thinking that as an engineer that lives in the Albany Schenectady area, you know, there's the one place where engineers flock to and that's GE. And sometimes I've gone on UDisc and I've just been scrolling around and I see this disc golf course that is in zip code 12345. That's the North Pole, man. That's where you send your list to Santa Claus. Is it really? Yes, it is. North Pole is connected in New York. They used to have retirees come in every year and answer every one of those letters. For decades, I guess they did that. They had retirees come in. That's where kids used to send letters to Santa Claus. The North Pole zip code was 12345, and it showed up over there. <laughs> the actual zip code of, of GE is not 12345. I think it's 12307. I thought 12345 is a zip code in Schenectady, New York. It is a zip code, but it is not the zip code for work. For my work. Oh, I thought I, I always thought it was like GE is so big that they had their own zip code and it's one, two, three, four, five. I think they should, but yeah. But anyway, so yeah, isn't there a course at GE? There's a course at GE. How did that come about? It came about with Tim DeFranco from the Saratoga Revolution fame. He was working there as an engineer. Me and him wanted to get a course put in over there. And he was part of the Health Ahead program, which basically sponsored healthy initiative things, runs, you know. Marathon runs inside, you know, they have a gym in there, they have tennis courts, they have a soccer field, they have a baseball or softball field, they have a cricket field. Right around the time we were thinking about trying to get a disc golf course in there, they decided to add a basketball to the tune of like, I don't know, $50,000 or something like that, or $100,000 or some crazy number, put an outdoor basketball court in. And we saw that as an opportunity and said, hey, how about you guys do this? And they were like, how about you tell us how many people are going to use it? And we got like, I don't know, 15 people. <laughs> To sign on to say that they played, and that's all it took. And they bought, and bought us nine baskets, and then laid out a course around the, the walking paths in the main pavilion over there, the Nardelli Pavilion. And it's been there since yeah, 2012. That's been there a long time now. So that's where the name comes from. Isn't it's called the Nardelli Nine, right? The Nardelli Nine, yes. The Nard Nardelli Pavilion is what it wraps around for the most part. Yeah, starts and ends right there. Is it a public place? No, employees only. Hmm, that's the long con. <laughs> Just get your pros. We had we actually had family day there, and they had so many people that we, we actually modified the course to be a three-hole course, and we had a ring of fire go on. We had disc cap had a tent there and stuff, and they actually allowed it. When you say employees can play there, is it like all employees? Yes. You can get Mark Hay on the property because he works for GE Healthcare. Do you think the course is worth submitting an application as a part-time janitor position? Is it played <laughs> on the weekends? <laughs> I'm trying to mix up my UDisc stats. The thing about that is, is I, I have to check. Way back when we were we did the family day thing, we had a bunch of DISCAP members on course. And in order to do that, DISCAP it had to become a certified vendor at GE. You had to go jump through some hoops and then show us show us that we were not for profit, that kind of thing. But at that point, they agreed to let members be escorted on site for the use of the disc golf course. So and I haven't checked that since COVID because everything shut down COVID. Visitors were all nixed and stuff. But since then, it's opened up. Visitors are more welcome now kind of thing on a uh, escorted basis for the most part. But I'd like to research that and maybe be able to get disc camp members access to it. I just wonder how many people that are trying to cross off lists or add to their tally. And they're like, man, I got this course. That's like five miles. They took it off disc golf course review because it was employee only. Tim G, the guy from Rochester that started disc golf course review. And I believe the security company that contacted you just because somebody drove up there. Because <laughs> the map's on it. More than one person drove up there and wanted to play the course. 
and I'd written on it that it was employees only good stuff. And so they, uh, security contacted UDISC and had the course removed at one point in time, but I've since put it back on and put in caps. And I know the security guys know and everybody on the staff out there will tell, yeah, don't go there. You're not, you're not supposed to go there. I put that in all caps on you just that it's employee. You can't get on there. So far, they haven't removed the course from UDISC since then. Plus, there's new people playing all the time. Find new names on the leaderboard every once in a while. I got to go hunt down who they are kind of thing. There was a guy that came in from Penn State that was an intern for a while. He was playing freaking three times a week trying to beat my course record. Oh, that's why you're watching it? <laughs> I don't know if you oh, go yeah. back. <laughs> oh, I just had to look at it, but I just wanted to see if anybody, anybody else is playing it kind of thing. I don't see everybody all the time that did play it kind of thing. And a lot of these guys moved different buildings, different divisions kind of thing, so they're not around. We have something called I think it's Microsoft called the Yammer. And it's like a Facebook private version. And I have a disc golf group in there because they have one for tennis. They have one for running. They have ladies, outdoor activities, that kind of thing. I've been contacted by people on site to run an event or something like that have a, or have a little seminar kind of thing. They've yet to follow through. They asked me about it, but nothing ever happened. I actually had somebody from North Carolina, the Greenville plant. Also has a nice property, and they chimed into me one day. They're like, "You got a disc golf course on GE property? How'd you go? How'd you do that?" So I explained to them the whole situation, how we got the course put in. And they said, well, "Yeah, we got a course. We got an object course. We throw the trees again. We got ribbons around trees and stuff. I could play it. We play this object course." I'm like, yeah, so we showed them. I haven't heard anything back from them whether they got a course in or not. But this is expanded. GE is expanded in that sense. There's people that play. There's guys in the shop that are working the wind department play all the time. Out there spreading it around. Yeah. So Corey wants to know if he bought a washer dryer from GE, can he get on site? Or not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's not GE appliance. It's GE Power. Oh, oh, okay. It's GE Vernova. Yeah, it's the power division. Mm. So you're solar. the reason why my national grid bill is going up? I think you owe me some money, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. And they got those huge solar solar panels all over the parking lot, and they still charge employees to charge their cars there. <laughs> charging stations it's great it used to be free when they first put the stations in they were free and i was like i was really thinking about buying an electric car just to go back and forth to work because i could have done a full electric kind of thing it would, have, it would have cost me a dime to drive back and forth to work but now they charge and just before i <laughs> just before i wanted to pull the trigger on that car they laid me off Them but i don't think that's going to be a problem now the way the workload is going and the way the retirees are dropping i don't think i'm gonna I think i'm gonna be out of a job anytime soon so you're no longer going to be running Tuesday Doves at J Park beginning of this year. Yep. What are you going to be doing instead? I moved it north. We're going northbound. I had to switch up days to facilitate availability of hole 18 at Chenta, but Chenta Creek is going to have Wednesday doubles. Oh, no, I got to change J Park Doves to Wednesday. Why? So I can't come? Yeah, I was hoping for some dividedness <laughs> between Doves Lakes. I'd say you already have a Stony Kill as competition there. Oh, right. Actually, you're right. You can, you can have Wednesday, Jeff. I'll keep Tuesday. I think most people that are going to Stony Kill doubles are a bit out of Shen and Ta's range for uh, weekday doubles. Well, I'm already up against Jamin in singles at CTK, which is also Wednesdays. Fuck that. I'm moving it. It's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think singles and doubles should be a conflict, but we'll never know. You know? Yep, you're right. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's enough people that are just playing doubles and more newbies on, on this side, I think. Yeah, I mean, Shen is the closest course to CTK. It's not worth finding out. Makes sense. Will there be a point series, Jeff? I'm thinking that's what's going to be the, the case. Still at odds about when I'm going to start it. I have a schedule set up for it, but alas, we finally got snow and they closed the gates. And I don't foresee them opening them in time for our usual late March start that I've done through. Basically, everybody has followed, starting with J-Park. Usually starts the Tuesday or so after the time change so that we have enough time to play around shen plays pretty well you know even with the six of even if a six of them shows up about two hours so if i can get everybody out and on the course teeing off by five o'clock i think i can get people through to around before dark it's not like they're going to close the gates they don't close the gates and they don't kick us out or anything like that but it's you know gets dark nobody wants to play glow golf with no glow discs mm. how close are you to shen and taha three miles and how close are you to jay park 30 miles See, it's about a 50-minute drive, and I'm maybe a mile from the Northway, so it's almost all freeway to J-Park. So you still plan on trying to make it out to Tuesday Doubles? I could probably show up there once in a while. Uh, you're A-pool then, Jeff. <laughs> I don't care. It's still 40 minutes from uh, work, which on Tuesdays I'll be down in Schenectady. I only get to work from home on Mondays and Fridays. So even Wednesday Doubles, I'm going to have to get myself to work nice and early so that I can stop over, stop in at home before I go. Yeah, so I'm going to tell my boss uh, once the time change, like, oh, yeah, Gary, I'm Hope you're finding me leaving about an hour early every single Tuesday from now until October. <laughs> <laughs> well, how far is your work from, Jay Park? No, nah, it's only like 
15 ish minutes. Okay. So you're maybe 15 minutes to home from home, basically. Cause you've like, yeah, you know, yeah, no, it's Jay it's Park's insane. backyard. Yeah. You basically have a pet beaver in your backyard because that's how close you are. Yeah. <laughs> Need this, somebody needs to eradicate that pesky son of a gun. Oh, I'm just waiting That's for that day to consider they, they just open up beaver season. So, Jeff, I've never played Shenantaha, but we did see a dubs team called Shenantaha Sucks. <laughs> I'd heard the rumors. What, what do you think of the course, first of all? Is it a good course? I don't know. I'll leave that open to the rest of the group. I like it. I like it. I get a lot of a lot of compliments about it from new players and experienced players. I've had people from out of town that I played NEFA events with years ago. I had a guy come back in this year and play doubles. He's got a job where he travels around, and he showed up here two weeks in a row and fell in love with the place. He lives in Connecticut near Wickham. He thought this was better than Wickham. I was like, that's just that blows my mind. There's like people that tell me that's better than certain courses that they play, and it's like those courses. It's, you know, I wish that course was closer. I would play it more often. You know? mm-hmm. Blows my mind. Some of, some of the reviews that I get. You know? And then with that, you always get the ones that, you know, this tree should be gone. There's always this tree and that tree. Mm-hmm. But you think those guys were goofing around, basically. They had their reasons for calling it that, you know, and I'm okay with that. I've had a pretty good track record with installations going wrong, you know, being delayed, all kinds of stuff, you know. <laughs> what if I ask Corey like a trivia question and he can't come up with an answer, so he says Shenantaha sucks. Are you happy with that? Or should Corey cut that out? It doesn't bother me. Too many people play the course for somebody not to have a negative opinion of it. You know, it's like I tried to. You know, originally, when one of the first horrible few disc reviews sh- showed up, the guy just gave it a half a star rating and says, "Too many damn trees." He says it's not so much of, of a course that it's just eighteen baskets placed in the woods <laughs> kind of thing. And I was like, "It is no way that it's that bad." You know, some of the holes are quite wooded, but it's like there's no poke and hope holes like the ones that like FDR. What's it, sixteen or fifteen? It is completely. Covered in trees, and there's one at Kisco that's the same way too, where it's just coated with trees. None of them at J Park. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All of Of course, it, 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 it's the same. It's of the same opinion. I mean, early on when of course it was only nine holes, I played rounds with a lot of people, more experienced people, kind of thing. One of the rounds I played, I played with Kenji and Greg and Tim Giardini. And Tim Giardini on hole five announced to me as we, after, after we teed off, he says, "This hole seems like a Michigan." And I was at odds. Actually, I actually had to ask him what he meant by that whether it was Michigan Jeff, it was a hole that I liked, or it was a Michigan hole because he's from Wisconsin, so he played Michigan disco. And he told me it was a Michigan-style course. So inadvertently, of the courses that I played, the dozens of courses that I played in Michigan way back when, that seemed to have rubbed off into my design mind. And so apparently there are, there are holes that have a Michigan vibe to them. So maybe we should just change it to Michigan sucks. Michigan, Michigan sucks. <laughs> <laughs> does, Michigan does suck because no, the, Emerald, the Emerald Ash Borer ruined most of our courses, you know, including the first one that I ever played at. That Rain Tree Park was, I don't know if, you know, Pat asked me earlier if, if I got, I've gotten better at that course. I've gotten better at that course, but of course it's gotten loads easier because of loss of a third of the trees or more. That seems to be the, almost the case. That was the fear I had a couple of years ago when the, those uh, gypsy moths came through here tore up the courses. I thought I was going to lose some, some key trees over at Shen and ruin the course, but most of the trees survived. The dead ones are still dead. That's what I don't tell anybody because there's two trees on two different holes that are, you know, the tree that everybody hates, the hate tree, tree that gets the most hate kind of thing, and they're both dead. Nobody knows really, but now they do. <laughs> they just don't know which holes because I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I got a quick quiz I wanted to do because... I listened to that whole episode and I'm taking something from it. So we did a quiz during that episode, episode 35 and 36. I had Jeff on back in April, 2020. You guys up for that? Yep. Yeah. Hell yeah. So the order is going to be Jeff, Alex, Corey, Jamin. Oh, running solo. Because Jeff's the guest. Alex hasn't gotten a point yet. Corey (laughs) is in second place and Jamin's the leader. So he gets to go last. It's a very simple quiz. I'm just going to ask you to name Innova mid ranges. All right. And it's just, you take a turn. Everybody, you name one, and then you move on. Just right. one? Keep going until you can't name anymore. Until we run out. I see. Okay. Exactly. So we'll start with Jeff. Name an Innova mid-range. I guess I can throw rock out there. Take the easy one out. All right. And just to clarify, he said rock, so that eliminates rock three, rock okay. X3, yep. rock yep. Yes. three. Do you mean I can't say V-Rock X3 now? <laughs> exactly. That's, that's what I... <laughs> I was really legitimately going to go with the V rock. Same, because so. <laughs> the classic rock is totally different than the current one. Yeah, what about an Ontario oh, rock. mold rock? Jeez, oh, <laughs> I just figured I figured I'd knock that out of the park right away. That's why I got. Right. That's why I said it. Get the bad news is, is 
I don't think Innova makes any other mid range. Yeah, that was all of them. That's the only yeah. mid range. Congratulations, <laughs> Jeff. You win. No, uh, Alex, what do you got for mid ranges? Innova mid ranges. I got this from the Innova website, so I hope it's pretty accurate. Give me the shark. You are correct. I'm giving Tucker half credit for that one. Yep. Corey, what do you got? <laughs> I'm going to go with my favorite mid-range, the lion. We're correct. Jamin. Stingray. Yes, it's on the list. That is so driver from OG land from my early days playing. When you started playing, the leopard was a distance driver. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. I do believe I, do believe I have a, a leopard or a stingray or something that says distance driver on it. Ultra long-range driver, right, yeah. That, no, that would, be the, that would be the viper. Oh. <laughs> Is that your guess, the Viper? The Viper, no, the Viper was, was extra long. Oh, it's back to me? Yep, back to Mako. me. Mako. You are correct. So the Mako 3, Mako, all that good stuff. Alex. Same vein. Let's go with the Coyote. Ooh. I don't have a Coyote on my list. So uh, It was an answer to a disc or no disc last week. It's a disc. Is it a... I, I'm pretty sure it's a mid-range. It might be a fairway. Bratty Lamar gave me one. With his team stamp on it. I well. totally just still assumed it was a, a mid range. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's not on the list that Pat's got. Pat, did you pull that list recently? Today, yeah. They moved something. We'll leave that alone. I'm not going to. I just typed in Innova Coyote and it's a four speed. Oh. It sounds like a mid range to me. It's a mid range with good glide. It's a distance putter. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to give you that one. You said Coyote? Yeah. The rib is not putter at all. <laughs> we'll give you that one, Alex. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We'll go like that. If I, if I'll pull it up, but it's got to be Innova saying it. And and where I got this list, it was the same spot I got the Coyote from. So I don't know what was. Maybe I missed it. But uh, Corey, what do you got? I'm gonna go my OG love, but now I've changed gears. I'm gonna go with a Cayman. You are correct, Jamin. Manta. Ooh, yes. Everybody's at two through two rounds. Jeff, start us up again. Running out of good ones. Oh, new one, Jay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. is a good one. Good guess. Alex. What did Corey give up? Cayman. Cayman. That's what it was. Mm. Yeah, so Gator's different from a Cayman, right? No. Yes. I don't know. You're going to have to guess it and then find out, Alex. <laughs> I'm going with Gator. Damn you it. You're correct. Fucking Jeff kept making me say the word Cayman. I knew that I was going to give up the word Gator. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I was surprised he didn't say it. I knew it was a disc. I was just uh, like, I'm pretty sure they're they're like related molds, but I wasn't sure if <sighs> they fell under the same. Yeah, they're like in the rock, same family, rock. you could say. I needed that one. <laughs> what do you got, Corey? Oh, and I mentioned one earlier too. Oh, Cobra, man, you are correct. Damn you, Cobra. damn you! You were thinking. That's not what I think of Jamin. I had one. Oh, wombat. Yep. All right, three rounds in. Everybody's got three. Jeff. Oh yeah, the one that the one that just changed from a putter to a mid range. The pig. Correct. Pig's in the original quiz, shit. somebody picked pig, and it they didn't get points for it because we did the putter only monthly uh-huh. last year, year before, and stuff. But that's the year it changed. Uh-huh. I posted a picture up of the, the, the spreadsheet that basically of all the mid ranges, the uh, poster that they have, kind of thing. I posted that up just so everybody knew what putters were. That was a putter. Well, I only posted up the putter area and stuff, and the pig was on there. They moved it and didn't move it on the poster at the time. Mm. All right, Alex. Oh, it's uh, me. I have a friend who throws a lot of wombats. Don't so do I'm it. Gonna say wombat. Somebody already did. Oh, somebody already said wombat. I totally missed that. Whoops. Was that Jamin? Yeah. yeah. My bad. Oh, the Atlas. There you go. It's got an overmold. Corey. Oh, damn. Now you say the Atlas makes me think of something else. Wait. I'm guessing your list would also include out of production. And is this? Ooh, hey, there you go. I'm going to go shout out Chris Dahl and say the kite. I don't have that. Oh, god damn it. I believe it is. I'll check it. I'll, I'll certainly check it. Isn't that out of production? Yeah, it is out of production, but I wasn't sure if. Might be a putter. It's a mid range. I know that, but if we're going out of production, then I, then I feel like I should get a re a re guess. I got something that was out of production, didn't I? Something like that. Coyote. Coyote. Yeah. Coyote's out of production. Then Corey gets it. Too. Oh yeah, let me see that kite, baby. Jamin. Uh, I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> Avatar. You are correct. That was the one I was thinking. That was like Atlas. Mm. Damn right it was. All right, four rounds in, we're still tied. I got at least one more round through. What do you got, Jeff? Down to the hard ones. Oh. Mm. Out of production, probably should be a freaking fairway driver to Panther. I got it on here. Right. Alex, I can't remember if this is a mid range or a slow fairway, but I'm gonna go with Rolo. Mm hmm. Mid range. I didn't think anybody would say Rolo. 
<laughs> Corey, Corey, what do you got? I want to say one of the Lasassos had like a video on it relatively recently. Jamin said Avatar. That was what I was thinking of. I'm going to say this one, but I feel like it's not a mid range. The Zephyr. That's a super serious one, isn't that? Doesn't that not fall even under the disc? Oh, it's not. It's, 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 it is. It falls in, it's a super, super class one. It's, it falls in with the Phoenix and the Condor. Yeah, yeah super mid range. <laughs> Throw and catch this. Yeah, it's, it's under catch this. Yes, yeah. it is. Does it have speed ratings? That's a question. That's a good question. Does it have speed numbers on it? I knew that would be a dumb guess. I, I guess I, why it was. A dumb I, guess. Guess. So we're doing a flight of the condor again. No, under stats, it just gives diameter and rim width. Yeah. Sorry, Corey. No, it's all good. Uh, Jamin. Oh crap! I had one. I had a bunch of them. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the king cobra, Danny. There you White go. Already done a cobra, Jamin. Cobra's out. Oh, okay. Uh, king cobra's a. King Cobra is not different enough. That's all right. I'm going to say Gargoyle. Gargoyle. Is that even a That disc? is absolutely an Innova mid range. They released it like three years ago for half a minute. It's real, though. <laughs> <laughs> Source, I know a guy. Like the Zeppelin from the Ace Race? <laughs> Just drives Zeppelin. Yeah. A Gargoyle is a hybrid disc, part mid range, part fairway driver. Give What's the him. speed on it, though? Six. All right, so this is the time where I'm going to bring up the fact that I'm getting the shit end of the fact that this isn't a snake draft. <laughs> <laughs> it says mid-range. I can't give half credit, so you're getting full credit. All right, so I got three left here, so we'll do one more round, and if you find any that are like not used anymore, we'll credit it. So we'll try to go through okay. one more time. Uh, Jeff. Shout out to OG Disc Capper, Tim Jardini, Spider. Oh. I would just remember that one. That was my reserve one that I didn't think anyone was going to bring up. I remember getting Tim one just one of the first years that I became sponsored as I got him a team stamp one. That was the same time I got my Monarchs team stamped and I got a phone call from him going, you really want those team stamps? Do you really throw those? Yeah. <laughs> Alex, what do you got? All right. I got two guesses that obviously I'm not going to go both at once, but um, if the pig Corey, is like in that. range, <laughs> is the Toro? Yes, it is. Yep. Let me say it's bad. It Psych, here. it's a putter. Get him out of here. Next. Approach. It's a freaking driver. It's an approach that's, disc. That's, yeah. that's, that's Calvin. That's Calvin. According that that driver. It says flat top over stable mid range. Oh, what? That's oh, some dog right. shit. I've been fucking scammed. I would have used that so much <laughs> long ago. What's the speed? Four or five? I thought it was like a I three. Think it's four, right? four, two, one, three. Okay, so it's, a four, it. so it's not even close. To, so, Jeff, what, what's your ruling? Were you saying that's good? Yeah, it's, it's, it's if it's on a list. You said it was on the list. No, it wasn't on the list. I looked it up, but it says, according to Innova, it says mid range. So four, two, what? one, three. Yeah. Right. Actually, the stamp I'm looking at with the bull, a Calvin Heimberg Star Toro, says mid range four, two, one, three. Hmm. I don't have my bag with me right in front of me, kind of thing. So I can't go, I can't go dig it out because I do have one of those. I actually have one. Corey's like four within reach, right? <laughs> Stock stamp one, too. So basically, I guess we're going four to six is our <laughs> numbering. <laughs> Or the six? You giving sixes in there? Sixes are kind of fair. fair that ratios. one time we gave them yeah. the one time. So yeah, that one hybrid one. All right. Yes. <laughs> uh, you're up, Corey. Ah, uh, you said the Toro was. The, uh, I'm still seething over that one. Another one right there, right in that same wheelhouse. It might be the one I'm thinking of. He don't say it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I got another one. It's actually a putter. Uh, shut up, Jeff. You know too many discs. There's <laughs> one on here that I would have thought would have been gone a long time ago. I'm going to say the Nova. I'll check it, but. I don't think it is. It's probably considered a putter. I believe that's a putter. It's used it too. It's like a two speed. Overmold putt and approach. Uh, approach. That's a mid range. <laughs> <laughs> it's approaching a mid range. <laughs> yes, it's approaching a mid range. Uh, Jamin. I got like a bunch of discs that are all like almost maybe mid ranges. I'm going to take a swing. I think there was a disc called a Lycan at one point, L Y C A N. No, that was a fairway driver. I do remember that one. That was a disc or no disc answer. Mm. Yeah, because that was a question I got right because I remembered it was <laughs> Underworld. <laughs> Straight flying mid range driver with a great feel. That's according to the Innova Factory story. Man, technically right is the best right. <laughs> As I understand it, mid-range driver is like the name for all mid-ranges. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, uh, do you guys, it sounds like a couple of you guys have another guess, so we'll do one more through. I still got three on my list that haven't been named. <laughs> We didn't get any of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff, what do you got? Right. Yeah. Oh, nice damn it. Alex, what do you got? I don't have the name of it, but I'm pretty sure... 
Innova made like their version of the MD3. It's going to be something something weird. Like the the PD was like the power disc, so it's going to be like oh yeah or something like that. Just before Simon left, Dismania didn't they make a disc? It's my guess. Whatever. I don't have the real name, but I don't have any other guesses. So either I know what you're talking about too. Yes, I know. Tim Giorgini throws the MD3. Yeah, I gotta have a name. Uh, I don't yeah, I don't remember the name, but yeah, I don't know. yeah. It's... If it's not the mid-range disc three, then uh, I got nothing for this round. No, I tried to type that in. It did not work, Alex. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think what you're thinking of is the fairway driver. I thought they had the PD. I thought they had the FD, and I thought they had the MD three. But oh, okay. I, I could be wrong Maybe. on those. Oh my god, I found it. just a new one. Just done to me. You got a guess, Corey? Nope. Pass. No. Um, I take that back. Uh, bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, Close. What do you got? It's in the disc caps of a beginner bag. We have a bag full of discs for beginners to use. When we back, we did our beginner clinics. The wedge is the wedge in mid range. I think it's putter. Maybe that's definitely out of production. I think, isn't it? If it isn't. It should be. Uh, let's see what it says. Three point five speed. Three point five. That's like almost. <laughs> it says mid range yeah. roller. Yes, that counts. Yeah, Technically like correct. It counts right. it's, uh... We've gone through another round, and a few people have gotten answers, and we still haven't hit the three that I have on my screen. <laughs> now I just really? know they are. Jeff, do you have another guess? Skeeter. It's in our beginner bags. Skeeter. What did you call it? He said Skeeter. That's all oh, the Skeeter. The Skeeter. Yep, it, it feels like a putter. It's it's stupid, understable. It's like throwing a freaking paper plate. Alex, anything else? Uh, no, I, I got nothing. Corey? Um, no. Jamin? I think it's considered a super class disc, but it's, it's it feels like a Jumbo Rock 3. I'm going to say the Condor. Oh, I have a Condor. I don't think it counts, but it's a guess. The Condor is like, they, the rim is almost identical to the Rock, but it fits, a Rock fits inside of it. That's how big the diameter it is. They're so big. Same thing with the Phoenix and the, like you said, the, what was the other one? Zephyr. Like, it doesn't say the numbers. Yeah. So is that the last round? So the Condor, the Innova page seriously didn't say anything, whether it was a mid-range fairway putt or nothing. But I went to the Infinite Disc site, and they call it a mid-range. The numbers are, it looks like 3402. What do we okay. think? Okay. That doesn't sound like a mid-range to me. That's I would call it a three a putter. All right. And right. now I'm going to the Innova page to check myself. Okay. Specialty. It's under specialty. Condor, Zephyr, and Mancani. That's a fucking lid. That's a lid. Big Kahuna is Pulsar and Superhero. Yeah. Super Sonic. The Sonic is not a, is a specialty disc, too. That is not a mid-range, even though it's just. But I think the Alien is. Well, I got Jeff at eight, Jamin at seven, Alex at six, Corey at four, and the Alien and the Wolf were on the board. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, that's. Wolf was the one. Who, I got that for a guy, guy, guy who plays on Crokinole League. So. I thought I'd zip through uh, last week in disc golf, and then maybe we'd sneak in a quiz. All right. All right. I will be right back. What's tough? All right. You didn't go to nine pin, Corey? To be honest, uh, I haven't played disc golf in like a week and a half, I think. <gasps> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I had that ski trip up in Vermont nice. uh, this past weekend. Oh, nice. So my main focus was to not bust my knees out and then come home and play disc golf this weekend. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right. So last week in disc golf, January 22nd to 28th, Monday, nine pin cider disc golf putting league week three. They're halfway through the 2024 season. 50 people came out for putting. Christopher Nicolella won the casual league with 13 points. The paid league had four people at 12 points, got them five bucks each. That was Richard Spencer, Pete Lauber, JJ Knapp, and Adam Nelson. A couple people at 13, got them 15 bucks, Todd Everleth and Ryan Jeske. Second place with 16 points, Derek Stazinski. And your winner with 20 points, fully over COVID, Joe Karen. Joe Karen. You're getting really good at saying Derek's name. Practice. Practice. He, uh, Derek got 25 bucks. Joe got 30. And nobody hit an ace, so 37 bucks goes into next week. Also, Christopher Nicolella got a free flight. I assume that's not on an airplane. Probably like what those five little beer testers. Yeah, yeah. four or five beer testers. Yeah. That was Monday. Tuesday, there was nothing. Wednesday, deadbeat doubles didn't happen. But Northway Putting League, winter 2024, week eight, had two juniors, one of which were new. Second place, Maceo, and in first place was Granger, which put your overall Grayson in third place with nine points, Maddox in second with 15, and Granger in first place with 31 points. Over in the women's, 21 players, one of which was new. Kennedy S. came in third, Caitlin Clay in second, and Meredith P. is your winner. Uh, women's overall, 
Kat Bemis in third with 47 points, Carly Calzada in second with 54, and Caitlin Clay pulling away with 85 points. Over in the men, 68 players, eight of which were new, had a tie for second with 15 points between Tyler Calzada and Jamin Hume. And your winner, Jay O'Leary with 19 points, which puts your uh, overall leaders, Joe Riley in third place with 109 points, Tyler Calzada in second with 115, and Jamin maintaining the lead with 120 points. Woo. Woo. Heck yeah. <laughs> with a week to give, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, if you show up every week, you'll drop that 13 so far, right? Yep. That's my goal. Okay. No aces this week, which means next week probably be a chunk of change. Ooh, I'm gone. <laughs> what do we think of capping, you know, pots like that and then, you know, contributing it to the next one? So if you win next week, it's not just like, you know, two bucks or whatever. In general, like also like ace pots or whatever at like Dubs League stuff. Yeah. If you've got a long running series where, you know, the ace pot starts getting up to 400, 500, 600 dollars, cap it at 300 or something. That's still a, a really big payout. One. And then start a second one to start the next spot going after whoever hits the first one. At Jay Park, I was rounded down so that there was something in it, you know, whether it be 25 or 30 bucks or something like that. Round down, you know, if it's, so if the A spot's 427, it's like I, I make it pay out 400 and the $27 rolls over to the following week. So if somebody hits one this following week, it's not t- zero bucks. Right. That and everybody gets into it the following week because nobody gets into it when it's zero. Yeah. At some point, have like a circuit breaker. Or just an idea, instead of capping it, because then you just kind of create the same problem every time, create like a circuit breaker number. Like if it gets up to 500, you take 100 and put it in for the next one. And so it drops back down to 400, but then that gives you something. Every time you hit up to 500, it drops the next. I would only do it the first time just so that, you know, if it's at 500, whoever hits the ace will be happy to get 400. And then there will be 100 to start next time or whatever and just leave that second pot at 100 and let it grow from there. Does that make sense? Let the other one grow back up. So the one that's 400, it doesn't get hit. Yeah, then that one can keep going past that now. It can get go past that 500 mark, but at least you've got that little like right. nest egg started for it. So when you hit 500, you pull 100 out right off the bat, set it aside for the next ace pot. It's unavailable until the original one gets hit. Yeah. I like that. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. That sounds very good. Sounds doable. I might have to adapt that idea. I think it's course or event specific. Mm. If you've got a whole, like, I'll just give you an example. Beacon, hole 10. My mom is 84 years old and she can ace that hole in theory. (laughs) I don't know what they do now, but what we would do at the time was 150. Once it hit 150, you just start another one to 150 because that might not get hit for a month, but then three weeks in a row, it's going to get hit. And, you know, you get one guy who's going to get three, 400 bucks and then the next couple people are going to get like. 20 bucks just meaning that it really depends how often it's possible to hit it wilcox has got two aces two ace holes on, on the original ad i'm saying yeah unless you play the reds no there might be a couple more yeah if you play the reds from the original ad, there might be ones. like fdr has hole one my mom couldn't hit that but that's a manageable ace and it's got like 16 it's got a few both the white and yellow on fdr one those are both hittable i don't know about one white yeah it's gonna be tough it's not it's, it's hittable, possible. but it's it's oh, not. Oh yeah, no, it's 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 hittable. It's just not hittable by. You know, there's people. certain people that can absolutely hit it. Jamin could hit it. Yeah, Corey, could you could you reach that one? I'm just going by what you call about your noodle arm. Yeah, right no, now. I've surprised myself, <laughs> and usually in tournaments that like I could actually reach the hole. I usually that's a hole that I'm scared to play, <laughs> or or scared to try to get a birdie on. I think with that hole, it's more about fear than it is about actually being able to reach it. You know, because it's a bit of a quasi tunnel action. But I don't know. That's just my opinion. I think the Jamin idea is great because that could work at any place. We could adopt that for our monthly ace pot. So our monthly ace pot just, it went two years one time. We would play the whites at Blatt and get AT hit it for $1,300 or something like that. Dang. Yeah, that's a yeah. payout. It's gotten pretty big. That was a huge payout. And we purposely went to shorter holes, you know, shorter courses. We bounced it around all the time. And it was like, there was times when, you know, you go to SPAC and no one hits an ace. And it's like, really? I get an ace almost every week there. Yeah, speaking of the uh, the monthly I don't know if anyone's been thinking about February yet, but uh, I made a post recently. And it got some likes. <laughs> yeah, it got some likes, but it doesn't seem like anybody wants to take over. So I might be uh, I might be claiming that one. Where are you going? I'm still figuring out where I want to go. But oh, okay. Right. Yeah. If people have suggestions, I'm open to them. You do what's ever easiest for you if you're going to run it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The current early uh, leaders were, you know, obviously Stony Kill is going to be easy for me. I was also thinking about potentially Thatcher. 
because I've never played it. And they've got the Helderberg, what's it called? Helderberg Open or something like that. Helderberg Championship. Uh, That's going to be in May. So it's a little bit far out, but, you know, experience is experience. I usually like seeing monthlies at courses when they haven't had a monthly in a while. Right. So... Yeah, like when's the last time the monthly was at Stony Kill and when's the last time there was a monthly at Thatcher? Yeah, Stony Kill was like May of this past year. Thatcher, I don't know if there ever has been. I ran a Thatcher one in a blizzard. Me, Matt Cully, and a rec player showed up. It was like Matt was in AM, I was in pro, and we was like we played nine holes and then we quit. And we were like, all right, that's yeah. it. <laughs> we called it at nine holes because it was in almost whiteout conditions. I kind of felt like I was going to go to that one, and then I saw the weather. I said, nope, never mind. I'm not going to that. <laughs> it was freaking crazy. It was like, yeah, no one just, we sat around and waited, waited, waited. No one showed up. Screw it. The three of us are playing. <laughs> <Yep>. We all win. <laughs> and also with Thatcher, I think there were some updates to the course relatively yes. recently. I think there's going to be. I don't know if they've actually been implemented yet. Yeah, because I think somebody wanted to do Thatcher last year, but I think Kenji said something to the effect of the changes haven't happened yet or something so i don't know where that stands i'll have to reach out to people but we'll figure out something one way or another that's it for wednesday thursday wedge putting league it sounds like it happened but i never saw like a result so i thought there was a weather issue and they were were contemplating not doing it i saw that too but it looked like it it ended up going off i just looked like they never put the results out there they're doing that at uh, Captain Lawrence, right? Captain Lawrence, yep. Bridgeport Thursday handicap, Marvin Manalo, shot a minus five. Arvino. And Disc Beat Club, season three, week 10, possibly. Mel Gallagher came in third with six points. Mike Smith in second got seven points. And Mark Stryker in first with eight points, which puts your leaderboard at fifth place with 25 points, Sparky Spaulding. Greg Kurtz in fourth with 30 and a half points. Mel Gallagher in third with 36 points. Kevin Cronkey in second with 39, and your leader with 45 and a half points, Mark Stryker. Typically on Friday, Beacon has a putting league, but I think Kristen went to that Northeast Disc Golf Expo, so there were no putting league results. Yes, I believe Sarah saw her there. Saturday, Bridgeport Singles League. A pool was Marvin Manalo at minus six, and B pool, Kyle Steger, plus three. Long Island did their dubs on Saturday, I think, to avoid the rain. They did A-B pairings with a mixed layout. Ryan Fitzgerald and Kevin Castilla shot a minus 13. And Skylands, who does a lot of stuff, but they rarely post. But they had their 2024 tag release. Played the silver blue layout, which is a par 60. And they sold more than 60 tags. The C pool, third place with a 75, Randy Rogers. Second place with a 73 was Anthony Orsini. And your winner in the C pool, Carl Seitz with a 70. 60 tags. Come on. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> It's a rainy Saturday. Yeah, not everybody can be as successful as this cap. <laughs> B-Pool, Brian Heller, uh, he posted this. Now I know why he did the third place. <laughs> B-Pool, third place, Brian Heller with a 63. Second place with a 60 was Troy Andretta. And your winner at a 59, Jacob Driscoll. And the A-Pool, there was a tie for third at 58 between Dustin Wolf and Benjamin Joseph. Second place with a 57, Brandon Lockhart. And your winner at a 54, Steve Brinster. He takes that money all the time. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Sunday, Wedge 2024 Winter League Week 2, run by John J.P. Hafner. They had 11 on a rainy day. Played FDR front white, yellow back, a par of 59. The Mixed Amateur 2 division, third place with a 65, Billy Forster. And a tie for first at 61, Matt Strickrod and Robert Bennett. MA1, third place was Adam Dorr with a 70. Jimmy O'Connell with a 64 in second. And Thomas Celez with a 60, was your MA1 winner. And Mixed Pro Open, second place, John Hafner with a 58. And your winner, Ryan Nelson with a 53. The Ryan Nelson? I'd say the Ryan Nelson, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I believe it's that Ryan Nelson. Mike Warner took the CTP on two white, and Billy Forster took the CTP on 11. Next week, they will be at Leonard Park playing the short baskets. And that is your last week in Disco. Jamie, are you thinking of doing this Empire Open? Uh, I don't know. He has made some changes to it. It's not just one round now. Mm. Last year, I didn't do it because I didn't want to spend $100 on one round of disc golf. Now it's double elimination, right? Yeah. So I haven't paid too much attention to all of that. But I mean, I would like to do it. You know, that's a bragging rights thing. And I'm all for trying to get some bragging rights Mm. and a boatload of cash if I do well. (laughs) That's, That's always... Of benefit. <laughs> but yeah, I'm still kind of undecided. Tournament season's ramping up right now. So it's hard to justify spending $100 on really anything, but certainly on my radar. 
Corey, are you thinking about it? I was waiting to see if you were going to ask me. Because I was going to be like, what, Pat? I got to ask me if I'm going to donate my money. Uh, I didn't know what you <laughs> were talking about at first, so I typed it in. Uh, to be honest, I thought I saw something about uh, disc golf on Long Island, and I thought that's what it was going to be about. But I realized now that it's the Dylan Reese match play bracket. Yeah. It wasn't double elimination last time, right, Jamin? No, it was not. That's why I didn't do it. Yeah. It was- so, I mean, maybe double elimination probably like am i gonna donate a hundred dollars yeah probably but i'll just i don't know pick up more cans on the side of the road or go longer with no ac in the summer <laughs> with match play though if i go up against jamin or somebody like that i'm I'm gonna lose to jamin in stroke play nine times out of ten but not ten times. yeah nine times out of ten in match play that probably goes down to seven or eight times out of ten i lose to jamin yeah maybe six you know i can i can have a blow up hole or two and still only be back, you know, one point from it. So I don't know. It's it's definitely something that I'm looking at as, you know, if I pay a hundred bucks to to donate at, you know, Warwick or something like that, I'm definitely donating there. If I pay a hundred bucks here, then I'm only probably donating. Yeah. Uh, registrations open yesterday for those listening at home. For the pre-register people, it looks like. Uh, just as general registration will be open February 1st at 8 p.m. Oh, right, because it's... Today's Friday. Monday. Yeah, I'm talking about... <laughs> it's on Thursday. <laughs> but those listening at home, that's what I was trying to get to. I was like, trying to wrap my head around what he just said. I am uh, actively listening at home right now. And <laughs> oh, I see, I see. I'm just saying. That's true. That's <laughs> I'll just read through it since we talked about it. The 2023 winner, Harry Lehman, has selected the 2024 finals to be held at Minekill on the MKDGC MPO layout. The regional final sites are Emory, Parma, Burbine, and Warwick. These locations were selected based on the 2023 participant locations and tournament quality courses subject to change if 2024 registration has significantly different distribution. The format will be similar to last year with one major change. The regional portion of the bracket will be double elimination. This decision was based on feedback from those who participated last year. I think this is a great change due to the fact that many early round matches will pair players with very different skill levels. This change will also give all players a second chance to make it to the finals through the loser's bracket. Once players reach the finals, four regional winners play will be single elimination. Seating will be primarily based on location to ensure early matches are local. PDGA ratings will be a major factor, but other details will be considered when players have similar ratings, such as rating robustness, how many rounds your rating is based on, tournament travel radius, playing away from home versus local tournaments, longevity, how long and how many tournaments played, Recency bias, early season PDGA results, head-to-head results of common tournaments played. Payouts will be similar to last year, 100% of entry fees and top-heavy weighing. Percentages will be determined based on registration numbers. I will be commissioning a perpetual trophy that the winner will hold for the following year and have added $5 to entry to cover this cost. More details to follow. I distinctly remember Harry saying during an oil change that he was donating at the beginning of last year's event. I thought he was kind of stupid of him to blow $100 as a family man. That's something he was likely going to donate for. And I made sure that I reminded him of that after he won. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're saying you're going to uh, remind Corey after he wins? Yes, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you should have to remind me. My memory is not very good. It would be uh, forever in stone here on the Hudson Valley Disc Golf Podcast. <laughs> so, Jeff, we're going to do a quiz, and you're going to pick a partner, knowing that the score that they have gets added to your score currently. So we're going to combine points. Uh, I'm not sure I understand, but I don't have a score. I the- question before you guys did a quiz a bit ago and those points oh count. Right. so who do you want as your partner pick me jeff pick me i did listen to the last episode mm. i listened to a few before then so i'm trying to think of who does well with that but it really doesn't matter because nobody knows what the topics are going to be no they don't not even me <laughs> <laughs> just follow <them. laughs> the internet's going to show us those exactly. oh what the hell let me have it, alex all right Damn, why is yeah. alex so popular I, I, I haven't won yet, so I don't know why I'm so popular. <laughs> Wait, but that means I get Jamin. Yep. Mm, yeah. All right, I'm back. All right, Pat, can you cut out somebody being excited to be my partner and send it to me for the rest <laughs> of the fucking year? <laughs> Just so you guys know the score going in, Jeff and Alex at 14, Corey and Jamin at 11. They ain't nothing. And Corey and Jamin will go first since they're trailing. Corey and Jamin, you guys are up first. You're down three points going into this round. Would you like category one or category two? This is disc or no disc. Traditional rules apply. What do you like, Corey? We'll do it for Jason and pick one. All right. Category one. 
Question one. What gas whose molecules have three oxygen atoms is a pollutant low in the atmosphere, but in the stratosphere, it absorbs harmful radiation? What gas whose molecules have three oxygen atoms is a pollutant low in the atmosphere, but in the stratosphere, it absorbs harmful radiation? Ozone? Yeah. I mean, that's O3, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's when you get that like uh, fresh air smell after like a lightning strike. Yep. Ozone, Pat. Is the ozone a disc? I want to say yes, because of course it is. I'm all right with that. It's a now defunct company. God damn it. But it does. <laughs> it, was, it was a disc. <laughs> does that count? No, because this is usually where Damon starts talking about, oh, well, I don't know if there would be a disc after a company. But ozone just seems like too believable of a disc. It does. It's, I agree. I think it sounds like a disc. I say we go with it. Yeah, it's a disc, Pat. Trash Panda Disc Golf, January 8th, 2024. My boys. Nice. All right. They get two points for that? Hell yeah. Yeah, one point for the answer and one point for the disc part. Okay. So, Jeff and Alex, what category? One or two? You got a preference? Let's but just go to. Let's go be to be different. <laughs> no reason. Category two, question one, a moraine is the name for the material and debris deposited over time by what as it moves on? A moraine is the name for the material and debris deposited over time by what? As it moves on. Sounds like a glacier to me. All right. It sounds about right. I'm trying to think of major events that leave something behind it to that effect. I'm going to agree with Alex and go with glacier. Is the glacier a disc? So the berg is a disc. My instinct is no. Glacier might be a type of plastic. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say no also. Yeah. I like no. Rogue Iron, January 15th, 2024. Dang. Rogue iron. Who wants a glacier? It goes like very slow and is really big. And powerful. Doesn't, doesn't do anything. It's a one speed disc. <laughs> it sculpts yeah. landscapes. Yeah. <laughs> Crashes into everything. Leaves behind Crashes people in. named Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> Corey and Jamin, what category? I'll stick with one. That sounds good. All right. Category one, question two. WTG Morton made history at Massachusetts General Surgical Amphitheater on October 14th, 1886, when he performed the first public successful surgery using what anesthetic? W.T.G. Morton made history at Massachusetts General Surgical Amphitheater on October 14th, 1886, when he performed the first public successful surgery using what anesthetic? Okay, so anesthetic, that wouldn't be painkillers like morphine and stuff. It would be like... Something that puts you to sleep? Anesthesiologist? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was, I was thinking antiseptic. Okay, and okay, so now also what category did you choose, Corey? <laughs> one. One? Okay. I wanna say helium, but I don't know. How much helium do you have to huff to actually get knocked out? I don't know. What's laughing gas? That's nitrous. That will knock you out. It's called nitrous, but I don't know. Eighteen uh, yeah, what else would it be? I don't know anything else that puts you in. Yeah, what's that? I don't know. Eighteen eighty six. Okay. Where did I get 1840 from? Got about 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What gas do you want to go with? Not helium. Okay. But, I mean, nitrous is the only thing I could think of. I don't know if it would be nitrogen. Five seconds. <laughs> I'm fine with whatever you think, Corey. Whatever I, you want to go with. I got feeling was nitrous, but... Okay, let's go with that. Nitrous it is, Pat. What do you think, Jeff and Alex? Oof. I don't have any good answers here. Oh. My first... Uh, oh, go ahead. What about ether? Ether, I like that a lot. I'm not coming up with anything better. My first thought was localized anesthetic, and I don't think that's going to be the answer of a di- name of a disc. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the name of a disc. <laughs> the thing is, you got to think in both terms. Okay. No. All right. Well, it's an approach disc. It stops the suffering. Yeah. <laughs> Give us ether the answer. Which was... good to me. All right. We're going with ether. No. Is the ether a disc? I thought there was I... no way that the ether was going to be the what. <laughs> is the ether a disc? I think it is, but I don't have much support for it. So if you're feeling a different way, I don't know. I, I don't know enough outside of Innova these days. <laughs> There's so many new discs out there in the world, right? Isn't there a company that makes more technical or medical type discs that are called this? You know, tonic. The Clash make doesn't. Clash I think make Clash makes a tonic. Yeah, tonic or something like that. Or yeah. We got to be careful. We don't want to give away too many answers in case they're future answers in this category. This is true. Mm. Yeah, my thought is yes. Yeah, let's go with it. Gateway Disc Sports, October 26, 2023. That's what it, fucking ether did again. Okay. Nice call. And that was a steal, so you guys get the next question. Category one or two? Me back a call. Let's go back to two then. All right. 
Question two, category two, the horseshoe or keyhole type of what curved span above an opening is associated with Islamic architecture? The horseshoe or keyhole type of what curved span above an opening is associated with Islamic architecture? Is that a keystone? No, it took an upside down spade. Like a playing card? It's got a shape to it like that. It might actually be the regular way this. It might actually be spade. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I think I do. What you said? You said... What nationality was it? Islamic architecture. Islamic architecture, yes. Could I hear the question one more time, quick? The horseshoe or keyhole type of what curved span above an opening is associated with Islamic architecture? Curved span above an opening. I know what you're talking about, but I don't I don't have the name for it. Curved span above an opening. Well, just like the other uh, quiz there, Alex, he, he kind of needs a name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it just an arch? Maybe. He's asking for a portion of it. So yeah, it would be an arch. It'd be a curve of some sort. Arch would be another word for a curve. Maybe that's it. It's not keystone. Yeah, keystone would be a specific stone. Yeah. It's a stone at the top of an arch. Yeah. You guys good with I that? don't think I'm coming up with anything better than arch. Arch is the best I can do. With, but it sounds about right because it's curved. It's you know, it's right where I'm thinking, but it might actually have a crazy other name than a, a disc yeah. name. <laughs> is the arch a disc? God damn it. Hey, nice. Is the arch a disc? That's yes. a that's a good question. The archer is a disc. Uh, I feel like an arc would be a disc, but I don't know if an arch would be a disc. Archer. <laughs> yeah, archer is a disc. Archer the arrow. <laughs> yeah. My instinct is no, but uh, again, I don't have much support for that. What do you think, Jeff? Do you agree? Yeah, I'm going to go with no. We had enough yeses already. <laughs> Vibram Disc Golf, April 20th. Oh, you're right. Damn it. I <laughs> I actually got one of those. <laughs> I was on the tester circuit. Steve Dodge was sending me those discs. Nice. Yes, the arch was a disc, yes. Damn. Corey and Jamin, what category? Do you want to stick with one? Or, or do you do you think two might be better? Mm, I didn't know arch. Or I don't think I would have guessed arch. So I'd say we'd go with one. Yeah, okay. We one. at least have some success there so far. One is good. All right. Question three, category one. Back in the 1930s, the high flyers of the U.S. Army Air Corps needed eye protection. Ray-Ban came through with what we now call what? Iconic style of sunglasses. Good Back choice. Back in the 1930s, the high flyers of the U.S. Army Air Corps needed eye protection. Ray-Ban came through with what we now call what? Iconic style of sunglasses. Ah, uh, is it Aviator, Jamin? That's what I I hope. <laughs> yeah, I think so, and I do think that's a disc, too. Yeah, well, I mean, wasn't there iconic Ray-Ban uh, glasses that you could think of? I think the irony of it is the iconic Ray-Ban glasses that we can think of aren't aviators. <laughs> You just blew my mind right there, but it sounds like we're going. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good choice. Yes, I think it's a disc. Yeah, Dynamic a disc. discs, May 26, 2016. Hmm. All right, Jeff and Alex, it is 4 4 for this round. We'll tally the totals after. You guys want category one or two? Stick it with two. I, yeah, I thought I had the theme for one, but now I don't. So I'm good with two. I'll never get the theme. I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm surprised we're actually scoring. <laughs> Question three, category two. What tallest mountain in North America was formerly named for a U.S. president? What tallest mountain in North America was formerly named for a U.S. president? Was formerly named? It's not named that anymore? It is no longer named after a U.S. president. What are tall mountains in, in the United States? What are the high peaks of uh, the Adirondacks or whatever they are? Washington? High peak? I don't know. And it, it might not even be an Adirondack mountain, so... Yeah, I think it was Washington State. I think it's where we're talking about. Well, I Pete's. It could be anywhere. I don't know. I'm not a mountain guy. I'm completely lost. Me neither. But yeah, it's, there's no Bill Clinton mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Trump Tower doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that's really coming to mind is like Mount St. Helens, but I don't know if that's a real. It wasn't a president. It's not a president anymore. The current name is not a president. Oh, okay. I don't know if that changed names or if that was always that or what. And it also blew up, so it's no longer the tallest. <laughs> yeah, right. A big chunk of it came off. Yeah, uh, I have zero good answers. <laughs> oh, God. Got about 20 seconds. I'm trying to think of a disc, too. There isn't a St. Helen disc. Is there a Truman disc? <laughs> Probably not. It's no longer named after the president, so yeah. it's whatever it's named after. It, what, whatever answer we give is not going to be a president's name. Oh, okay. I see. I have no idea. I'm just, I'm just no answer. Yeah, I, I, I got nothing. Nothing? Mount St. Helens just because it's technically a mountain name? I like it. Corey and Jamin, you got a guess? So you're looking for the name that it was reverted back to, right? I mean, whatever it's currently called. Oh, okay. It's currently called Denali, Corey, and it used to be called Mount McKinney. McKinley. 
McKin- sorry, McKinley. Sounds like we got it right. Hell yeah. I, love that <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. maybe. Uh... Yeah, whatever, James. But does. yeah, that's it. It's, it's Denali. It's in Alaska. Yeah, that tracks. Fucking school teachers. <laughs> is yeah. the Denali a disc? It's a car. It is a trim level of a vehicle, yeah. It, it is not a truck. Tr- car or truck is a trim level. Is a disc? I kind of want to say no, even though I hate saying no's. Ooh, if if you're gonna say no, I feel like I can't shoot that down. It's like Denali. Who makes? I mean, it's definitely a word that could be used for a disc, but I I, I don't know. Yeah. I, like I, don't I mean, it's no. like it's the tallest peak in the you know the United States. Okay, now you got me switching to yes. Okay, I'm fine with whichever one. I'm I'm kind of tempted to say yes on this one, but I I can't tell you I have an actual reason for that. Yeah, it's a disc, Pat. Rogue Iron, December eighteenth, twenty twenty three. Nice, nice. Out of it. Just became one. <laughs> Yeah, those are the ones we love here. I was gonna ask if uh, Goliath Disc is, uh, discs had started making discs again. <laughs> you kidding me? I was so mad that I couldn't use U.S. Capitol for the hockey ones last time. <laughs> 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 All right, that was a steal, right? So yep, that was a that steal. Was a steal. Yeah. Was Corey a steal. and Jamin, what category? I think we go with one. Yeah, we're halfway through. I got Corey and Jamin at six, Jeff and Alex at four. Category one. What six-letter word can mean both a bright light above someone's head or a dark cloud above our head? What six-letter word can mean both a bright light above someone's head or a dark cloud above our head? My first guess was Halo, but then Pat read the question again, and I'm an idiot. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You can't even count. A bright light over someone's head or a dark cloud. Huh. I like this question. I'm going to get it wrong, but I like it. Yeah, this is a thinker. Yeah. Bright light. Over somebody's head. Mm. You said six letters, right? Correct. All right. Thank you. This is where it would help if you played less octortal and played more crosswords. Oh, I got this. <laughs> Come on. All right. Now we got to get it. Jeff, calm down. I'm glad you got it because I don't still. So. I think I, 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 you know, never mind. I'm shutting up. <laughs> not saying, not giving him anything, any help. I want to steal this one. Got about you don't know seconds. it. Not a lot. I don't know it. Can you say the question one more time, Pat? Yeah. What six-letter word can mean both a bright light above someone's head or a dark cloud above our heads? Above our heads. What is... Man, I have no freaking clue. No, I was, and every word I think of is only five letters. And none of them make sense for both scenarios anyways. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> oh, ten seconds. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I don't... I can't think of anything at all, man. Not, I hate it. I, I can't even s- think of anything close to what the category would be. The theme... Got a guess? No. Nope. Shit. Shit, that sucks. Nothing? Nothing. No. Nope. All right, Jeff and Alex, what do you got? Serious. Uh, cloud. Yeah. No, it's a cloud, and I think it's the bright light part is actually a certain type of lightning. I think it's the, the lightning you see up in the sky that's not a bolt of lightning. It's actually just the clouds lighting up. Hmm. I believe that's the, that's the term for that type of lightning. That's like C-I-R-R-U-S? Yes. It would be six letters, right? Sounds right to me. Sounds right. And I think it's a disc. Can with that? I'm happy with it. We were looking for Nimbus. Nimbus. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay, damn. The same categories. Yeah, yeah and Jamin, category. you were right. It, it actually means Halo. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Elevation Disc Golf, September 11th, 2023. Yeah, I, w- I wasn't getting there. I learned something new on that one. That's cool. So if we guessed Nimbus. Halo, would you have said, uh, can you be more specific? No, because it's a six-letter <laughs> word I was looking for. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> So Jeff and Alex, what category? One or two? All right. Well, I've got I've got a good handle on the category for the first one. Go with it. I might have the category for the second one, but I'm I'm good either way. What do you got? Let's, go with let's two. Let's go with one. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. What are we doing? One. One. All right. What nearby galaxy bearing the name of a mythological princess is often visible to the naked eye? What nearby galaxy bearing the name of a mythological princess is often visible to the naked eye? Hmm. God, I should know this. I have a telescope. The galaxy that I think of as the closest one is the Andromeda galaxy. A disc? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Andromeda is a good go for there. I'm lost. I'm completely lost on that. So you're good with that, Jeff? Yeah, let's go with it. Is the Andromeda a disc? Most definitely. Is or will be, so I'm good with yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. Oh, come what? on. Guys. Got one of them. Nah. Got one point. Back a point with uh, four questions to go. Andromeda is not a... F- That's crazy. I think we have to switch to category two, Jamin, unless you feel strongly about this one. No, I I am good with whichever one. I hate this one now. You going to (laughs) category two? Yeah. I don't have a theme for either one of them. That was one thing I was trying, you guys were discussing on the last last podcast. I was clueless. I don't think you guys revealed it. I still didn't know what the hell it was. 
<laughs> All right. Question four, category two. Named for its location on the Rio Grande, what national park has more land area than the state of Rhode Island? Named for its location on the Rio Grande, what national park has more land area than the state of Rhode Island? Oh, you son <laughs> of a bitch. Jeff, I sent you a Facebook message. Collusion. <laughs> collusion. So national park on the Rio Grande. Put a spot on the Rio Grande that would give it. Named for its park. location on the Rio Grande, what national park has more land area than the state of Rhode Island? All of them. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to just think of like national parks. Is Big Sur a national park? That sounds something semi-river related. Big Bend? <gasps> is that a national oh, park? Oh, 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 that's good. That's good. I like that. Because right. then he'll ask us if the bend is a disc. I think that would be an easy no, maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, but I do like Big Bend. All right. Let's go with it. It kind of it fits the theme that I'm thinking. I'm still lost on that. Big but Bend? Big Bend, yep. Is the Big Bend Oh, it is the Big Bend. Please. Damn it. Oh. It couldn't have just been Bend. Big Bend? I don't like it. I, I don't like it either. But I don't like it so much that it makes me almost think that it is a disc. It is a disc shot. You know, I put a Big Bend on that one. Um, yeah, that's something that's that's used by someone that doesn't know what the terms Anheuser and Heiser mean. So that, I thought it turn really big, too. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not it's a, a disc. Turn. Yeah, it can't be. National Park Service, December 12th, 2022. The National Park Service Wait, has really? their own line of disc now? <laughs> P-E-R-K. Oh. A national Park is, I want to say, Nate Perkins yeah. making discs. Oh, National Park. Okay. The Big Bend is a disc? Yeah. Apparently. Yep. Jesus. You guys said no, so you missed that one. So that's good. Yeah. So so I think it's seven to five right now. That's what I, what I got right now. But we don't we have a three-point lead? Four. The previous... Four? Was it four? We did have a big lead from before. I totally forgot yeah, about no, that. Yeah, no, the Nimbus quest really screwed us. I thought it was three. I wanted to say it was I fourteen to eleven going in. So yeah, well, maybe. I don't, I don't. I don't know the total scores of what we had. So you have to well, shit, Corey. I forgot about that part. Yeah, no, me we already too. had the card stacked against us. I tried to get Jeff to pick me. I would have dragged him down, but <laughs> hey, there's still time. I could have picked Jamie because I knew he had he, he was one behind me in the in the first half. So I figured I'd make it a little a little more fair. Jeff and Alex, three questions left. What category? One or two? Let's go back to one. Yeah. Final question, category one. The nymph Callisto, a handmaiden to Artemis, was changed into a bear and later became what constellation? Who? The nymph Callisto, a handmaiden to Artemis, was changed into a bear and later became what constellation? I mean, it's either got to be Ursa Major or Ursa Minor. Yeah, the Ursa. I'd say major if we have to pick between the two. All right. So it's a big bear. It's a bear. It's a, yeah, bear is bigger than minor. Or is this the first time Pat says, can you be less specific? <laughs> <laughs> you guys good with that? Ursa major? I'm good with it. I'm going with it. Is the Earth major a disc? God, they have like so many freaking constellation discs. I have a pretty good feeling that it is. I, I feel like I've seen it before. I, like not the actual disc, but like a thing on infinite or something. <laughs> You agree, Jeff? <sighs> yeah, I just, just, I just think that there was so much. There's a company out there. I thought it was Infinite. You're not thinking about it. It's, it, it uses the constellations for all their almost all their disc. Yeah, I'm going yes. Give it to me. We were totally wrong again. XCOM discs, July seventeenth, twenty twenty three. All right. So final round. It's eight to seven. Corey and Jamin over Jeff and Alex, and you both have category two questions. And they have. A four point lead on us from the other stuff? I think it was three. Okay. Three, All right. it was three yeah. points. So okay. actually, that means you're down two. All right. So we can still win this, Corey. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Question five, category two. When it became a national park in 1919, it got what name used by the locals because it seemed like heaven on earth? When it became a national park in 1919, it got what name used by the locals because it seemed like heaven on earth? Oh, my God. National parks is not what I thought I needed to read up on before today. <laughs> <laughs> this is not French. There's, uh, I think my thought on it, Corey, is Zion. Zion National Park. Ooh. See, this is what you get for spending all that time at CTK doing all that course karma stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. Got. <laughs> for some reason, the only thing that came to my head was Everglades, and it's a terrible guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like Zion. All right, let's go with Zion. Is the Zion a disc? Oh, a kind of, it's a kind of a good disc name. Yeah, I like it. It sounds powerful. Yeah. You guys good with that? Yep. Yes. Latitude 64, October 8th, 2017. Oh, right. That's one of those, like, overmold discs they made way back when. All right. Final question. Is that two points? Yep. yep. 
So I, th- I think we're even right now. Yep. yep. Going into the final question. Question six, category two for Jeff and Alex. A 1990 photo of Earth taken by what probe prompted Carl Sagan to call planet Earth a pale blue dot? A 1990 photo of Earth taken by what probe prompted Carl Sagan to call planet Earth a pale blue dot? God, that thing is way the fuck out there now. I heard so much. Yeah. So it's not Challenger. Is it Voyager? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because Voyager's way the hell out. Past Pluto yeah. or some shit right now. Challenger didn't get like a mile. <laughs> <laughs> hey Challenger now, wow. Too wow. soon, Alex. Man. <laughs> I think I'm good with Voyager. Voyager. Is the Voyager a disc? It sounds like a really good disc name, so I'd be happy with yes. I'm going with it. Whammo Inc. January 28th, 1997. Wow. I don't think I ever bagged one of those. I did have Whammo in my bag at one point in time. <laughs> Through the 86 softy putter. It was a 10 to 9 in that category, but overall, 23 to 21 was the final. Jeff and Alex. Close. Got there. Mm. What were the categories? First one was just up in the sky. We had Ozone, Ether, Aviator, Nimbus, Andromeda, and Ursa Major, and National Parks, Glacier National Park, Arches National Park, Denali, Big Ben, Zion, and Voyager. <laughs> I was totally off. I, I only paid attention to two of them. I was like, it's just curves. It's arches. Hey, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought about it again, <laughs> which is good because yeah. it would have led me on the wrong path. I didn't think I had it until after Denali. And then I was like, oh, Glacier National Park, Arches National Park. I'm OK. I've had it then. Yeah, I didn't think I'd actually get a full round in, but they just pulled a glacier popped out and Denali is pretty recent and Big Ben. That's crazy. It was hard enough to find a question for Big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Nimbus, man. It's killing me, man. I thought for sure that Cirrus was right. <laughs> That's a good guess, yeah. Thank you, Alex, James, and Corey. Thanks for coming on, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. 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 And uh, sweet up, Hudson Valley. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Oh, thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> <laughs>